All right, good morning, agents. This is Kevin Lauren. I'm the Director of Training and Marketing. And today we are going to go through different ways to drum up referrals. Referrals is the number one source of deals for realtors. So that's something that we always want to keep in mind. And we always want to keep that top of mind. So really good topic for, for today. Before we get into today's uh, presentation, I'm going to bring Bill Seitz from Clearview Mortgage on the line. Good morning, Bill. How are we doing today, buddy? Good morning, Kevin. I'm doing great. All right. Fantastic. So, like I said, today is going to be a really good, um, you know, kind of a, a brainstorming and just ways. A lot of these things, of course, you guys have thought about, but, you know, it's a really good idea to bring these things back up top of mind. So we focus on them. And we can really make sure that we are hitting these referral sources. So, Bill, uh, before we go further, what's happening out there in mortgage land? Well, uh, I'm going to fill in for Cameron today. He's traveling. Um, but uh, yeah, today is a key day because uh, for those who follow the markets, um, the, you know, everyone's patiently waiting the Fed, um, the Fed's decision on whether or not to raise uh, the federal funds rate by three quarters of a, a point. And I think that's all but inevitable. Um, but I know the markets will react uh, when it's official. And there'll probably be some, uh, you know, subtle information about what they plan to do in September. So, you know, right now, which is interesting, is rates have actually come down, as you can see there on the chart, in the last few weeks, have actually come down. Um, and it's important to note that just because the Fed raises rates doesn't immediately translate to um, a higher rate on your mortgage. Um, the bond market is really, is really what's tied to the mortgage mortgage I mean mortgage rates. So you can see there the 10 year treasury is down um, from let's go back to you know basically um, you know end of May, early June at its peak, right? At th almost three and a half uh, for the for the 10 year treasury bond and now it's at 2.77. So even though the trend is going up over the over time. Um, in the short term, you know, the bond market is really what's going to affect mortgage rates. So after today's, you know, after we find out what happens today, I think it'll be really interesting to see on next Wednesday's webinar. We'll let Cameron come back on and price some loans out and do some comparison on that. But um, we'll give it a few days to adjust and see what happens here and see how, uh, the, you know, how it absorbs into the system, into the markets, and uh, we'll have a better idea. But for right now, it's actually a little bit better than it's been. So that's good news. Uh, that's great news. Yeah, this is really interesting. And I, I think this is honestly the first time I've ever seen that. Um, you've been watching this stuff a lot longer than me, but the, you know, the, the Fed raises rates and we're seeing those rates come down. Is that something that you've seen before or is this kind of new? Yeah, it, it's not, it's not uncommon. Um, you know, I think over, you know, what, what'll happen though is the rates will continue to go up. But like I said, in the short term, you know, the way the, investors and the money's moving to the bond markets and how um, you know, that's being played. It, it has its own kind of life within the bigger macro portion of it, if that makes sense. Sure, for sure. So, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, you have macro forces at play and then you've got, you know, the day-to-day -day forces at play. And, and like I said, mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year treasury. And the reason why they tie it to that is most, um, homeowners own their home for seven to 10 years. And so that's like the closest, you know, mechanism that they, you know, tie it to um, as far as investors. So um, that's kind of, if you read up on it, it's kind of the, the, the answer you'll get. And um, it's just interesting to see how it all plays out day to day. Yeah, absolutely. So this is um, kind of leads into what we're going to be talking about today, Bill, which is, you know, creating this, you know, we talk about it all the time, creating a good business network of other professionals that you deal with, that you, you talk with, you, you know, um, surround yourself with these people. And so when you guys come on these webinars and you get these, these great bits of information from Bill and from Cameron and, and from any of the other uh, presenters that come on our webinars, 
this is good stuff for you to be able to relay to these other business professionals, right? So this is your chance to provide some value to those other professionals. So you're the person that they come to for real estate information, for perhaps even, you know, mortgage information, because you have such a great um, relationship with Clearview Mortgage, your mortgage providers. So this is your opportunity to be that professional and to be that person that really is the expert. Right, Bill? 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of our whole premise here at, at, at Alter Realty Group and Clearview Mortgage is we're trying to empower you with, you know, really good professional information that you can spread out into your sphere and your networks. Um, and you can, you can talk at a high level, you know, sophisticated level of, of finance and, and real estate. And people are going to notice that. Exactly. So, so th that goes lends itself exactly to what we're talking about today, which is to, you know, you don't, you shouldn't get a referral if you don't deserve a referral, right? So the things that go with referrals are obviously doing a great job, caring about your clients, providing the right information, you know, um, being that, that person that is the professional that they respect, right? So those, that's the base. So we, if you're doing all those things, then you can confidently ask for a referral and, and have that confidence that, yes, you're going to provide that the great information. You're going to be a fiduciary for that client. You're really going to act on, on behalf of that client. So, um, so that, so the, the first thing that every agent needs to, to be uh, aware of is that you deal with different home service providers, right? Um, and I'm just going to read this real quick. So as a real estate professional, you already know that getting more referrals is the key to building a large profitable business. In fact, according to the 2021 profile of real estate firms by the National Association of Realtors, repeat and referral business is the top source of leads. We know this. So here's how to go upstream to set your business to unlock seven sources for getting more real estate referrals. So what do we mean by upstream? So that means that some of these, these home service providers or some of these other professionals, they're gonna know that someone's ready to buy a home before you do. And so we call that upstream, right? So if we can create these relationships with those providers upstream, we have a better uh, opportunity to get that deal and to know about the deal and to provide some information to that person um, as, as part of these, this other business person's uh, business network, right? So who, who are these people? Well, the easiest and quickest list is right here. General, contact, general contractors, insurance brokers, plumbers, electricians, painters, handymen, property managers, HOA managers, landscapers. The list can go on. These are all the types of people that you interact with and you need when you're selling real estate. You know, somebody, you, you've got to have a go-to person in each of these departments. That way you're prepared when your client says, hey, I need this or I need that. And conversely, these relationships are two-way street. So you are going to be referring business to these people, but you want to make sure that you are asking those people to refer business to you super, super important. And uh, one way to take this a step further is to actually create a group of these professionals and get together once a month at a coffee shop, talk it out, you know, have a, have a half hour sit down, you know, uh, meet with these people face to face. And that way you're all sharing this important information amongst each other. And you're able to share those referrals. So every, every general contractor wants referrals, every insurance broker wants referrals, every business professional wants referrals. So if, you're, if you have that mindset and you're creating this network of professionals around you, two things are gonna happen. First of all, you're gonna be prepared for your clients. And second, you're gonna know um, exactly who to, to uh, point your clients in the right direction and, and where, to, where to send them. So it's not like, oh, well, let me just do some research. You know, you're saying, nope, I've got the, the greatest painter. I've got the greatest electrician. These are my guys. These are my go-to people, right? So that provides that level of confidence. And when you instill that confidence in your, in your clients, they also will refer you business. 
because confidence is attractive, right? People are attracted to confidence. So if you're having that confident um, conversation with somebody, yep, I know exactly who my property manager is. I know exactly who the handyman is. No problem. Let me get you in, in contact with that person. I work with them all the time. You know, they're vetted. So that is a lot better than, you know, saying, oh, well, I might have somebody. Let me let me do some research. Right. So um, same uh, same thing. Attorneys are great. Attorneys having, uh, you know, good relationships with a few different kinds of attorneys is a really good idea. Attorneys are very specialized. You know, uh, a divorce attorney probably doesn't have the same kind of uh, a skill set that an estate planning attorney has or a probate attorney. So you need to have relationships with all these different kinds of attorneys, right? Um, so one second, let me check the Q&A. Yes, Albert says, don't forget accountants and CPAs. Absolutely, they're huge. And Anthony P says, will this doc document be available for download for us? Absolutely, I will include this entire uh, piece in the replay. So for sure, accountants, CPAs, really important. And the list goes on too. So any other people that you're constantly dealing with and referring, those are really important people to stay in contact with. And Anthony P says, don't forget roofers. Of course, roofers are very specialized, right? Uh, a general contractor will generally have a roofer, right? Oh. So those are great. Uh, state planning attorneys, probate attorneys, all these different attorneys are really, really good as well. So in some areas, um, you know, uh, especially in large metropolitan areas, there are huge companies like Boeing and Raytheon and some of these big companies that are all over the world. They, it's a great idea to make it, make a, uh, some kind of a, a communication and a, uh, you know, a, a relationship with some of these larger companies. So, and sports teams are the same way. They're constantly relocating, you know, uh, people in their community. And so if you have a good relationship and a partnership with some of these larger companies that are constantly, you know, moving people around, moving em employees and executives to different spots, that's a great way to also increase your referral base and, and the amount of people and companies and, uh, and things that are referring business to you. So just going, going down to you know, these, some, some of these local uh, company uh, headquarters and you know, making a relationship, not a bad idea as well. And it's a great, you know, why not? You're getting involved with your community. You're uh, allowing these people to contact you, you're there ready to, you know, offer your services. So um, companies are a really, really good source of referrals if you can make those relationships. And so, of course, all this is about relationship, right? And of course, be involved with your community and your schooling, as Albert says. So all of those things are super important. Um, being involved with the community, as we always talk about um, charities, that's not even on this list, but charities, we always want our agents to be involved with charities. I don't particularly put it on the, the uh, official list of how to get referrals because we want you to be involved with charities for the right reasons. You will end up getting referrals and you will end up talking to people and they will know you as the realtor in the community, um, as being part of a charity. But, you know, um, we never want you to be involved with charities just because you're going to get referrals. That's not cool. <laughs> so uh, that's why this, that's not on the list. But charities are a massive, uh, you know, they could be a massive way to get involved with the community and to just uh, bring yourself top of mind when people are, are thinking about re real estate. So um, don't hesitate to get involved with charities, but for the right reasons. Universities, if you live in an area with a university, same kind of thing. You can get involved with the local, um, you know, people that are involved with relocating teachers. And a lot of times, you know, when students get out of college, they, you know, want to start their life. They want to, you know, stay in the area many times. So 
Um, graduating students are a great little source of referral if you can get involved with the local university. So not a bad idea as well. Some of you are involved with, you know, um, alumni associations or, you know, maybe even university events. Uh, you can work with fraternities and sororities and all that kind of stuff. Even, you know, school clubs and athletics. Some of you, you know, did sports in college and you may have, you may still have some uh, relationships with some of those, those teachers and or coaches. So also great uh, sources of referrals. So, you know, uh, people do love working with alumni, you know, people within the, the uh, colleges, they love working with alumni. Um, so um, something that I've done uh, after I uh, graduated is I've gone back and I've done, um, I, have, I have a couple of uh, friends that are, that are professors and they say, hey, come on back and, you know, do a talk on marketing or do a talk on, you know, how you've been successful. So I go back and I, I like to, to do that. I don't really, I don't do it for referrals or anything like that, but I just think it's a fun thing to do. And it's a great way to give back to the community and, you know, go back to the, the, the college that I went to and to, you know, further some of these, these uh, younger people that are coming through the ranks. So that's something that I do just almost really just for fun. <laughs> um, and then as, uh, as Albert says, financial planners, CPAs, huge source of referral, especially if you can make a really good uh, connection with some of these. And then other realtors in different markets. So, you know, real, it's a great idea to make, um, you know, relationships with realtors in your area. There's a lot of synergy that can be, that it can happen there. But I really encourage you to get involved with realtors in other markets, tons of other markets. Reach out, ask these people if you can help them. Because as we know in California, a lot of people are moving out of California. So, and where are they going? They're going to, to places like Florida and Texas. So it's a great idea to make relationships with realtors in those areas. And that way you have a go-to person that you can refer your clients to if they are moving out of the area and vice versa. So, you know, other markets and other realtors, always a good idea to, you know, network with those people and stay top of mind. So, um, and then hairdressers and barbers, that's, you know, fairly random, but most people do have a really good relationship with their hairdresser and barber. So make sure that you, you know, some of those, uh, those people will allow you to put like a little kiosk up or, you know, put your, put your business cards up or to do something to, of that effect. You know, we all have uh, the ability to create a QR code. So you can create a little QR code that sits up, you know, in your barber's office and, you know, people that are interested, they can go and they can go ahead and uh, uh, scan that and they can get in contact with you. Right. So uh, hairdressers and barbers are, fairly random, but that could also be a good source of referrals. So don't want you to discount that. So the way that we want to, you know, once we have these relationships with these different entities, of course, we're going to want to make sure that they're getting at a minimum our monthly newsletter, which will, of course, get them to at least remember that we're there, right? So you always have to have that tap on the shoulder. Because nobody has the uh, the time to call every single person on their list every month, right? So we have to automate some of this stuff and make sure we're getting some of those touches without that individual phone call. So in a perfect world, everybody will get your, your monthly newsletter. And I mean, all your hairdresser, your barber, your other realtors and other markets, financial planners, CPAs, all these different people in your business network, they will get this monthly newsletter. And then the in a perfect world, you'll segment that list and you'll select a portion of that list and you'll follow up with those people with a phone call and a text or text. And so that way you're getting a few touches, you're making sure these people understand you're still there, you're the professional, you're there to answer questions, you're there to provide knowledge in your sphere of influence and in your, um, your, your specific uh, market. So um, making sure that they get that at least once a month touch is imperative. 
So if you're not part of our uh, program too, you can certainly upgrade and that will give you the, the ability to uh, utilize our CRM system and make sure that they are getting that monthly newsletter. And of course, you all know that I do provide on a monthly basis the content for the newsletters. So you don't have to you know, wonder how that's gonna happen. You can just make sure that you're gonna get that every month about the first, second or third of the month. I send that, new, that monthly uh, newsletter content out to everybody. So no excuses. We have the ability to provide great content to our clients, to our sphere of influence, our business networks. And that is the number one way that we can ensure that we can get referrals. And then obviously asking these people for the referral as well. You have to mention it, you have to ask, um, especially like I said at the beginning of the presentation, if you're confident in your abilities, you're confident in what you do, you certainly should ask for the referral. And you're gonna be providing a great service for those people. They're gonna provide a good service for you. And it's a great, great synergy. Um, so Bill, do you have any, uh, any kind of comments on this network of referrals and how to get referrals? No, I, you know, you covered a lot of territory. I think, um, not sure if, if I heard this one, but this is what I like to do when my kids were younger, my kids are getting older now, so they're not, um, you know, you know, as involved with the youth sports, but, um, you know, I, I coached, uh, both my, my son and my daughter's soccer and baseball teams. And one, obviously you want to be around your kids as they grow up and you want to be involved with their, with their, you know, their, that process of growing up, but you get to meet so many local families in the community. And through that season or through that, you know, year, um, you get to learn about what everyone does for a living, where they live, you get to go to the pizza parties, you get to go to the, the, you know, the, the functions and, um, you know, you really get plugged in and, you know, I've met so many local families here um, where I live through through doing that, and that only helps you get more referrals and be more connected into the community. And then, and then I also say, obviously, the school, the school as well, um, being involved with with your with your kid's school is the same concept, right? You're really getting the you know getting embedded in the community, and the more people that know what you're doing, the more um, likelihood you're going to get get in business from that organically. Exactly. And so if you're part of the community, people, because real estate obviously is about trust. Um, if you're, you know, you, you have a certain trust for, you know, the person that uh, coaches your kid's soccer team, right? Of course you do. Um, especially if that person is an upstanding person and, you know, all, all of the people on this call certainly are. So, you know, that's a great point. Um, Albert also throws out, what about apartments? Of absolutely creating apartment or, um, you know, uh, relationships with apartment complexes and stuff like that, that took completely, you know, same kind of thing. And I've got one more question from Marlo O'Donnell. Uh, do we have a platform where we can share the information on different businesses we may need to use? Yes. So it's a great idea it on your website, Marlo, to list these people to have a little spot on your website where it's like, yeah, I have all these different service providers. Uh, some people choose to include their, their information or they, some people choose to kind of uh, control that a little bit more and say, yeah, contact me. I have you know, the solution for any of these, these people. That way you can be a little bit more of a conduit. And that way you can make that phone call to the roofer and say, hey, you know what? I do have a person that that is going to use your services because that again kind of solidifies that relationship. You know, everybody's going to pick up a phone and is going to be excited when someone calls you with a referral. I don't care who they are. <laughs> so that's a, a good point, Marla. So, and of course, you can uh, contact me and we can go through that more uh, one on one. So, um, so that is the basis of the presentation today. I don't see any more questions. Um, I do have a question actually from Anthony. If we do not have a list of these service providers, how do we create this list and find these providers? That's a great question, Anthony. So this is where you get to kind of vet. And so um, I encourage you to ask people within your sphere of influence, if they can recommend anybody like this, then you can make that, con that contact with them 
and slowly build your business network. Call them up, ask them how they do their, you know, how, uh, you know, what, what kind of uh, services they provide. And then another great idea for this entire business network is to, in some of these cases, you know, some people or some of these providers can offer a freebie, right, or a discount or something like that. And so that way you're not only providing a great service um, and somebody that's vetted for uh, in your sphere of influence, but you also are able to, you know, make sure that that person really does a good job and you're able to, you know, kind of control that a little bit better. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Anthony. And I think I have one more question from Jeff. How will I receive your monthly newsletter? Uh, great question, Jeff. You're new to our group. You will receive an email from our, our uh, intra-office email communication, and that will have the, uh, the monthly newsletter content. And you're basically just going to copy and paste that. And you can make an appointment with me, and I will go through that with you one-on-one. -on -one. All right, guys. So that is all we have for today. Uh, Bill, thanks for coming on the line. Thanks for your input. We appreciate it. And agents, thanks for coming on the Wednesday webinar. We appreciate your time. And we hope you guys get out there, make it a great week and a productive week. And we will see you next week on the webinar. Have a great day.